welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, back to talk more of our top six favorite Expanse episodes. We're at number two. There's only one left. Now, like I said, these aren't really in particular order, just two each season that were picked as fan favorites. They're widely known to be fan favorites. I want to apologize if this is your first video and you're going, I didn't vote for this because we kind of didn't have time to set up a poll. So that's what we got. So, but this is all still just build up for what's coming on Friday, just a couple of days away, the season four premiere. And so I'm re-reviewing some of the best episodes to get us all kind of more excited. Now, I wish more people were watching these, but <laughs> what are you going to do? So we're talking about season three, episode six, it's Immolation. I rewatched my old episode five review to get myself... Uh, Reacquainted because I haven't had time. I don't have time to rewatch the whole series. Wow, was I uh, I was a little pissed off in that uh, review. Uh, of the events that unfolded in episode five, but episode six is the basically the end of Caliban's war. How did you guys hear that, man? It sounded like a friggin' like ghost in the room or something. Anyway, this as as much of a down note that episode 5 was where all the bad things were happening <laughs> episode 6 is where everything the tide turns and we get the closure of this book and we get to move on to the next thing that's going to happen in the Expanse universe and the back half of season 3 going into season 4 now that's because when you know it got cancelled and it wasn't picked up I mean it really left the fans hanging and you guys really brought it together I got told you know like I keep saying how do I become a screaming firehawk <laughs> I was told I already am because uh, of what I do here for the show but uh, I don't know I, I guess I didn't I don't expect to like an in what do you call it uh, uh, where you get inducted into something <laughs> but I'd like to think that I hopefully can be worthy of screaming firehawk status at some point because I love this show and I can't wait for Friday. Um, and I don't know, like, leave in the comment section uh, whether or not you guys want me to do a live stream review for the first episode or do you just want a regular review? Because I'm kind of thinking about doing a live stream review for it. Um, like, I'm talking immediately after, but that would be really late. So, and I know there's going to be some people that aren't going to wait. There, you know, there's there's some people out there that I don't particularly care for, but uh, that they love the Expanse too. They're going to be doing a live stream, and I don't know. I just I I'm, I'm excited. So let me know what you guys think about doing a live stream when it premieres. Um. So and uh, let's jump into this. I'm sorry, it's been a really long day too, and I've got to I'm trying to knock this out while doing it justice. Because, like I said, the first time I watched this, uh, you know, episode five, I was I was really mad. But in this episode, Nguyen, the guy who basically hates everything Mars, you know, fired, you know, from the egg of the king, all the protomolecule pods, 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 off of Io, and he's reporting. Sutter's mutiny to Earth. And Earth wants confirmation because now they're finding out that their own ships are all firing at each other. It's a clusterfuck up there. And nobody knows what's going on. Meanwhile, Alex, he gets in. He starts trying to shoot as many of these pods down as he can. But, you know, he has to wait until they actually get airborne to lock on them. Other ships are trying to shoot him out of the sky. You know, this new Yin guy, man. Even, like... <clears throat> I'm actually kind of glad I didn't rewatch this because I didn't want to get myself all riled up as I, I was in that episode 5 review. So, Aaron Wright and Mao and, and everybody involved, they're trying to send these pods to Mars. That's their destination because Aaron Wright is still determined to say that he's doing this all for Earth. You know, I, but really, to me, Aaron Wright is really just, he's, he's just doing the only thing that he has left to do you know or the only outlet left for him I feel like um, and so then you got Strickland Strickland and Mao Strickland and Mao are trying to get away Mao's basically ready to give up 
but Strickland talks him into trying to escape because Strickland is uh, an evil piece of shit who will never admit, you know, he's going to go down lying and running and hiding just so that, you know, you'd think it's, you know, for the experiments, really it's just he's saving his own skin at this point. So he's talking about we're using the kids as shields. He's going to go release the proto-molecule creature. He's doing everything to get between him and the army, well, the army of Amos, Holden, Bobby, and Prax that are coming to basically take them down. Well, <laughs> Mao takes off with his bodyguard and Strickland goes to grab the kids after he releases the proto-molecule creature. He's like, such a waste. This guy. And like, I, I think I remember saying something that he reminds me of like an evil Hugh Laurie from House, except then it's like, well, wasn't Hugh Laurie kind of... <laughs> he wasn't as bad as this. He wasn't like this guy. This, you know, Hugh Laurie would never... His House would never experiment on kids to kill them and stuff. He might put them, you know, he might try to make them sick to try to find out what happened, but I don't want to get sidetracked because it's really easy when I get this tired. Um, we find out that Bobby's power armor comes in real handy, real quick. I, I She's a badass. She is... Somebody that I had doubts about on this show, just about, has always found a way to turn it around on me, and I love it. I love it. Even like this guy Katyar, who was, you know, kind of set up as a, just a guy who is, you know, a usual kind of throwaway character, becomes really integral to the plot of this show. You know, in season two, he was there kind of protecting Avasarala. Now he's stuck here and he gets to have like the major hero moment. It's amazing. Um, and like I said, uh, they find out that the Agatha King is hit with one of these pods. And guess who's up there? It's Katyar. He's, he's stuck there. Everybody's killing each other. And this girl that he helped save, you know, she's now infected. And, you know, he tells her that you're, you're screwed. We're all screwed, but if you help me, we can stop this from getting any worse. Uh, she does kind of a weak, ah, like shooting at the, the thing that's got him locked up. Because I was thinking, man, you know, you know, just kind of not really paying attention to how she's shooting. I'm surprised she didn't just, you know, like, it would have almost been funny if she had just killed him on accidentally. Like, oh no, I meant to, like, you know, undo the lock. Um... But he, he tries to get through the ship, and it's it's just riddled with the protomolecules. So you know Katyar is probably not going to make it out of here. Um, meanwhile, they they see uh, Holden and Bobby and everybody. They're down in Io. They see what they think is the kids, but there's something else. What is it? Well, it's the protomolecule creature, and it's coming towards them. So in order to give Holden and Amos and everybody a chance to get to the kids, she goes after the protomolecule creature all on her own. You know, Avasarala tries to chime in and it's just like, ma'am, for once in your life, shut the fuck up. <laughs> As she just runs charging with the guns blazing. I mean, I almost feel sorry for the protomolecule creature because it, it's like Frankenstein's monster. He wasn't asked to be created. It, it can't help to do what it does. And in fact, to me, it almost seems kind of like it doesn't really know what it's doing. You know? Strickland says, go do what you do. You know, get what you're made for. But really, I think that it's also kind of curious. Like, literally like Frankenstein's monster, but they call him Prometheus. Um, so they go off on a nice chase. It's, you know, the power armor again comes in pretty uh, handy. And Aaron Wright then finds out, you know, he, nobody else um, what is going on, but when he's informed about the pods, he knows that Mao and the Egg of the King and all them fired the pods off. So he's sitting there going, oh shit, like it's working, it's finally happening, you know, we're going to get Mars. But Anna, played by Elizabeth Mitchell, who, I love Elizabeth Mitchell, I love her. Uh, I, I liked her before, she was Juliet on Lost, but now after Lost uh, and her character on that, I, I really love Elizabeth Mitchell. So I was so overjoyed when she became a part of this cast, and I love 
her character of Anna, the Reverend, who was friends with the Senate Secretary General Gillis, and she finally gives him the evidence against Aaron Wright. So we might as well tackle that whole thing because that's just a big mess too. Because she gives the you know Gillis the the opportunity to bring Aaron Wright in there, shows them the the evidence. He's like, "Where'd you get that?" It's like, "What the fuck does that matter?" And then Aaron Wright, just knowing he's fucked, is just like, you know, does this guy ever have a spine? I mean, he's laying his cards on the table, right? It doesn't matter anymore. He knows he's screwed. So, you know, he's just like, yeah, you know, you, you think that he's, you know, that you're doing something for him, that he's getting better, that he's doing the right thing. But really, he'd do this if he was talking to the janitor and then he'd talk, start talking about how the, the virtues of a mop. And it's brutal. Like, he's ripping him a new one, and, you know, it's that, you know, the stuff that you've always had in the chamber, you know, cocked and ready to go at the person that you've always wanted to say those things to. You know, when there's no, you know, what are they going to do to you? Arrest you again? You know, <laughs> put a, you know, you, you, you can't get any worse. Aaron Wright's already screwed. The worst part is, is Aaron Wright is, for lack of a better word, right. She, you know, Anna gets, you know, has that look of pride that, you know, he's, Gillis is doing the right thing, and he just immediately just flips it, like, oh, hey, I was screwed here, but now I get to blame it all on him, and now I'm the hero, I'm the guy who found out what happened, and I stopped him, and I put him away, and just that immediate just, that goes over her face of just going from pride to just, ugh politics man politics so <laughs> uh, Bobby leads the creature out uh, and they have this great uh, chase I really like the chase that they do here and then they fall hard to the ground um, Holden goes after Mao when he ta when he when he ta after talking to Avasarala and Naomi and Alex go to, to, to the king on the Razorback, which is a badass ship, to go try to take care of the, the proto-molecule on the Agatha King, find out if, what they can do there before, see if they can get control of it, maybe stop the pods. But when they get there, all they find is New Yin without ammo, telling them it's too late. Well, that's when Katyar tells him, well, guys, I'm not going to make it. And Avasarala tries to, you know, again, she's just sitting there. I feel bad for her because she just she is, doesn't get to be a part of anything. She's just there to try to tell people, you know, don't do it or whatever. And everybody's just kind of like, the episode is basically they're like, shut, shut up. <laughs> so he says, I'm going to blow this whole thing up, which he does. He gets his big, he gets the big hero moment. I mean, this is just this guy. Just this guy. And that's one of the things that's great about this show is they take that unassuming person, the person that, um, you know, is the unlikely hero, the absolute uh, dark horse comes out of nowhere hero, uh, to blow the ship up. Now, that means that Alex and Naomi got to get the hell out of there quick. And, you know, New Yen, well, who cares what happens to him? Blow him up twice. Um... I did like, by the way, the, the line from Aaron Wright, I fought to save Earth, you fought to save yourself. Like, as bad as Aaron Wright is, that's just, you know, he really believes that in a way. And it's a great line. Delivered great. And he, that actor, he's fantastic. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Prax is then reunited with May. And this is just badass because... Uh, this is where Strickland, right? Strickland shoots his own person in the back and then pretends that he was protecting the kids from them. From from this girl who was going to hurt them. And he's all, oh, no, hey, I helped her. I helped her, man. You know, and Prax is really happy and he has to explain, try to explain to his kid, you know, why didn't I come back? What happened? And she tries to explain what happened to her and what happened to uh, Katoa. And how they changed him and turned him blue. And they're listening to all this stuff. And Strickland keeps trying to talk. And they're like, dude, shut up. 
And he just keeps talking. Amos is smiling like, no, man, you, you got you to gotta shut up, like, right now. <laughs> and then Holden, he catches up with Mao, kills his bodyguard without hesitation. Just, Doo. guess what? You're just, this is, we're not even going to try to, like, negotiate. I'm not going to even give you a chance to send your guard after me or whatever. It's just, he's down, get on your knees. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, we try, we were trying to save everybody. That's what everybody's line is, right? Now that now that it's all out in the open, everybody's like, well, we're trying to save Earth. We're trying to save this, that, and the other. And it's like, well, great. Did you fix it? No? Can you do anything else? No? Then shut the fuck up. That shouldn't be what this episode is called, man. It shouldn't be called immolation. It'd be called, it should be called shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, you know... Prax then, you know, says to May, hey, uh, you need to go hang out with Amos, who's my new best friend, by the way, my life, my, my very best friend, which is a pretty, pretty surprising look on Amos's face when he hears him say that, you know, my best friend in the whole world. Um, right? Where did I find that at? Uh, da, 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 da. Damn it. Oh yeah, to Amos' surprise. So like, Prax goes and... Um, yeah, my camera's acting up again. Lowest settings, everybody. Lowest settings. Let's see what happens if I... Uh, I better not even try to pause this. i probably just try to get this video over with. So, Prax goes to kill Strickland. Because he knows what's up. This guy's just crying. Oh, I got listen. I was there. I had to went back to Galilee and got her. Blah, blah, blah. And Amos stops him from shooting him. And he's like, "Look, man, don't. You know, you're not that guy." And I was kind of like, "They did that. They did that moment where the guy pulls the gun on him and then gets talked down from shooting him." And I'm like, oh. But I know, like, now that I've known, like, and I've seen the episode before, I know what's going to happen, so it's much more satisfying to know what's about to happen. So, Prax leaves, and then, you know, Strickland, for a half a second, is like, oh, thank God. You know, and Amos just turns around, and he's like, I am that guy, dude. He doesn't say dude, but, you know, and then, you know, you thought Prax's gun was, you know, oh, look at this gun. Amos lifts up that great big giant gun and just kablooey, you know, we get dead blood just... Praxis and go or with his yeah, May's like, Where's Dr. Strickland? And Amos is like, Yeah, he's not coming with us. <laughs> so, um, Bobby then she comes to with the proto molecule creature climbing on top of her. Her armor's not working, but the thing kind of looks away for a second. She's able to get her gun up and she just fires into its freaking head at point blank range. And what's interesting is there's blood. Blue, red blood so I mean this thing was still part human and I think that maybe that's it just it just didn't really seem like it knew what it was doing I, mean, I think it was just kind of giving chase because she was firing on it maybe there was part of it and I'm sure you guys will you know who read all the books will tell me what was what was really going on but I mean it does it just doesn't feel like it was even really trying to hurt her intentionally like it just So, um, I'm glad we're almost done here. Um, so, Naomi comes up with the idea that there may be a way to still stop the missiles. And this is really frustrating. Alright, I've really got to end this. So she gives the coordinates to Fred Johnson, who's got the missiles, the nukes. And so he uses the rest of the nukes. You know, she, Naomi comes to him like, hey, look, there's a way for you to have a bigger position now, and you could do some good. So he fires the missiles at the rest of the pods before they can hit Mars. He stops them. Mao's arrested. He gets brought down on his knees in front of Abrasarawa. You know, Bobby gets brought up. She's all right. She's bruised as hell. Uh, you know, to be with his daughter and uh, uh, what's, what else we have here? 
este oh, well <laughs> and you find out that Naomi's leaving and that the proto molecule pops off Io like a big blue and gray zit as Amos goes what the fuck is that and that's the end of the episode and it's fantastic we get a new beginning something new is happening uh, with the proto molecule we averted war again on Mars and an absolute catastrophe with this creature. Mao's in custody, Strickland's dead, Nguyen's dead, but Nguyen took a lot of people with him, man. He took a lot of good people out of this show. Um, Naomi's leaving the crew for now, you know, for now. But all in all, a really, I mean, again, you'd think that this would be a finale. This feels like a finale, but it's just the halfway point of the season. And that's one of the brilliant ways that they've done this show. And it's just amazing that uh, it's gotten to continue. I can't wait to watch it on Amazon. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow with the 13th episode of Season 3. That This season's finale. I believe it's, what, it's called Abaddon's Gate, right? So it'll be what, for a lot of people, we're possibly thinking that this was the last episode of The Expanse. And it's pretty crazy that after all this time, you know, it's finally coming back. It's only a few days away. So uh, it's just crazy. And I hope, hope you guys like revisiting this episode. Uh, hopefully you guys watched this uh, before uh, you, you know, like maybe we're binging uh, The Expanse again on your way ready. I know there's had to be a lot of people that were just burning through episodes. So thanks for re-watching and watching me re to have another take at uh, The Expanse. Sorry about the camera. As usual, I don't know why it's not working unless there's a whole bunch of people using up the bandwidth here. I don't know because I've got it on the lowest setting. But if you did like this all new take on episode 6 of season 3, please hit the like button. Comment, definitely. Please comment. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about the idea of the live stream. What you guys think about the episode overall. Uh, what do you, you know, what are you looking forward to most in season four? That kind of thing. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, okay, we've got that contest that's going to be starting as soon as the premiere hits. If you're a subscriber and you leave a comment on any of the season four videos, uh, you know, you're, we're going to do two contests. One uh, at the halfway point of, well, since they're all out at once, right? One, uh, we're going to be doing two contests. I'm going to announce the first winner uh, halfway through uh, season four, my season four reviews, and then a second winner of, a contest, of the contest uh, at the end of season four. We're giving away another one of these, and I think we're going to give away like a season of your choice on DVD or Blu-ray. For the, for the second prize. So, anyway, like I said, you have to be a subscriber, though. You have to leave a comment. Uh, otherwise, you know, hit the bell for all notifications. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, reviews underscore gun. If you feel so inclined, you can also donate to the channel and make it better. Uh, we That's uh, at paypal.me slash smirking gun reviews. Otherwise, this is Rob saying have a great day, and we will back. Be, be back. Blah, blah, blah. I'll be back with the number one top six favorite episode, fan favorite episode of The Expanse coming up in just another day or so. So have a great day and we will see you.